The Golden Globes. I know you didn't watch because no. you were you were sleeping. We were watching at home. The stars showed up. They showed out, especially on the red of carpet. Course. So here are some of the looks that people are talking about. Margot Robbie, come on now. Look at this. Iconic. It was a custom recreation of the 1977 superstar Barbie doll. It was made for her. Gorgeous. It was made. It, she was born to play that part. Mm -hmm. Angela Bassett. Hello. Is next. She also presented. Ah. Uh, Show that. stopping in a Dolce & Gabbana dress. Gorgeous. I lo sometimes yes. all you need is an LBD. That's it. That's all. Issa Rae, you I know love you love her. her. Can do no wrong. Every time I could find uh, her very easily yes. in the crowd. This she I looks know. like a, the statue that you wore. You, you know what? You're right. She does. I love it. And uh, that, that was designed by Pamela Rowland. Okay. Oh, Pedro Pascal. Oh, my man. Marisol's man in her head. Mm. Oh, first of all, he wore a sling because he injured his arm in a fall. And still managed to make it Somehow look stylish. Somehow still looks better than I ever would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Okay. How do we pronounce Barry's last name? Did we decide? Keoghan. Keoghan? Okay. Barry Keoghan. Your star. bestie. Stompburn. Yeah. It was a, mit a mismatch burgundy situation. I liked it. You know, I, d I did a stock of his Instagram like and? any normal person would after I saw the film. He, I think he might be a model as well. Probably. He, all of his, his entire feed is just pictures of him in clothes. Good for him. You got Louis Vuitton, you got the, and he, he he's a well-dressed man. All right. I wonder if he smells nice. He probably does. Okay. Rounding out the bend, Billie Eilish. Okay. Okay, we were talking about this during the Marisol Cita Makeup Minute over on our Instagram. Go follow us. She's gorgeous. And if this she is her style, nothing. this is her Fine. style. She needs nothing. I... Because the skincare is... is always on point. Her, her skin is dewy and gold and, and flawless. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, super talented. So if you didn't have a chance to catch the show last night, we know just the person who has his or her finger on the pulse of all things snubby, dubby, and everything in between mm -hmm. at last night's show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back film critic and host of the Brown and Black podcast, Jack Rico. Hello, Jack. Ladies, how are you? Ah, oh, uh... so great to see you. <laughs> this guy. What did you want to copy, Issa Rae? Where's the glitter on your? I know. On your golden cashmere no, sweater? No, no. Even though, even though that she just looked phenomenal last night, but you know, my eyes were on Jared Leto. You know. Not a bad, not a bad choice. You know, th 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 this is this is Jesus walking on earth over here. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jesus, some of these uh, fans call him. And, you know, I can't pull off that jacket without the T-shirt underneath mm -hmm. like this guy does. I bet you could. And, uh, Don't I give was up like, on you yourself so quickly, Jack. I think you could pull this look off. I could probably pull, but, you know, the <laughs> hair. Well, the his hair. hair is part of his look. And, and then I love J-Lo. Did you see J-Lo? How could you not? How could you not? She's perfect. Everything she does is perfect. Beautiful. It's it's, it's 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 so classy. This is a from Nicole and Felicia, but it looks like a Dior dress. Mm -hmm. It does look like a Dior. Right? Very classy, elegant, and I just love flowers on a dress. Is that? It's uh, just beautiful, and that color noted. just looks great on her. Duly noted. He likes she looks on a dress. An, uh, like an angelic. She's perfect. Vision. I don't know. She is. Perfect she is perfection. In in body. She is. And oh, by the way, she's Puerto Rican, so there's that. That's right. Jenny from the block. <laughs> that uh, makes okay. it even better, right? Exactly. It, no, it does. So the host, obviously, for the event this year, after many no's, Joe Coy said know. yes. Uh, oh. You know, the reactions online are very interesting. Everyone was saying he didn't hold back. I don't think, I feel like most, the general consensus is that he missed mm -hmm. as opposed to hit. Mm -hmm. What I would be a little bit more blunt, Alex, and I would say it was a train wreck oh. by many people. Yeah. Uh, fell yeah. flat, yeah. bombed. Um, I wouldn't go to that point. I yeah. think he disappointed. And, you know, yeah. here's the thing. Everybody has said that hosting an award show today is a thankless job. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, this is a guy, Joe Coy had just sold out Madison Square Garden yep. in November. No mm -hmm. small feat for no. any comedian to come in. He has about two or three specials on Netflix. He's Filipino American. That has never, no Filipino American has ever uh, hosted an award show of this magnitude. And he was called 10 days before. He had writers from the Oscars, everybody helping him out. But here's the thing. His jokes didn't fall flat, and I'm starting to think it's because maybe two reasons. One, 
His jokes come from an anecdotal experience. Mm -hmm. It's from his own life. It's not about celebrities and ribbing them in any way. Right. He's also not a late night show, which has a relationship with all of these celebrities. And when you know a friend is ribbing on you, it's very different than someone yes. you don't know and That's doesn't right. have the viewer recognition to go after you because then what happens is you have reactions like Taylor Swift. Oh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, take, let's take a look at that one, shall yes. we? As you know, we came on after a football doubleheader. Uh, the big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. I swear, <laughs> there's just more to go to here. Sorry about that. Eeks. I, uh, it was a little cringy, right? It was a lot cringy. I so wanted him to win because, as you mentioned, Filipino American, and I think you are spot on with the fact that he had 10 days. These are not his friends because he's not a late night show comedian. Um, that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna but use that like line at my next cocktail party. No, that's party. right. Because you, if if I can make fun of you, but if someone else were to make fun of Muddy Soul, I'd be like, him. you're dead to me. That's right. But, right, but, right. but to that extent, he, he's a stand-up comic. Mm -hmm. What do you think he's going to get up in there do, and do? He's going to roast everybody. Right. I mean, these celebrities, yeah. it's not their first time. Taylor Swift, wipe that sour puss off your face, Well, honey. she also feels some type of way about I, Taylor I'm not a fan Swift. of hers. <laughs> I, she's a talented, talented artist, right. songwriter, Saturated. everything. Saturated. But come on, get over yourself. It was funny. It's yeah. true. Even the NFL analysts are coming on That's it. Right. Anyway, we'll move along. <laughs> okay. uh, so in your opinion, well, actually, not in your opinion. Let's go over some of the big winners. <laughs> from last night. Okay, we have Oppenheimer. Hello. Succession, The Bear, and Beef. Run us through it all. Let's go. So, you know, when you have, you know, Oppenheimer from the get-go has been sort of the front runner for best picture uh, at the Oscars. That's what we're all mm -hmm. talking about. A lot of rivals, a lot of movies that could have sort of displaced it, but the Golden Globes sort of felt so much like everyone else and all the critics are feeling is that Oppenheimer, this is Christopher Nolan's year. Yep. Mm -hmm. He hasn't really won that big <clears throat> picture Oscar, even though he's done so many great movies. Succession, we all kind of knew. Right, you know, yeah. It's the last Succession season. It delivered in a huge way, pierced through the pop culture noise, and it is considered probably one of the greatest television shows of the last decade, so yeah. it earned it. Uh, the Bear... This was a show that everybody loved, but nobody was really sure if to mm. award it because you were dealing with other big celebrities and a lot of big uh, TV shows. But Jeremy Allen White is a star. A lot oh, of people oh, call wow. him the white, blonde, blue-eyed Al Pacino. Oh. oh. And, 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 and he is now having a, a, a moment had as a Calvin Klein brand. We didn't know. We, we, you know, didn't know yeah, we had no we idea. Know we know of course you did not know this. Of course you did not know this at all. didn't see the photos videos. <laughs> but then you got Ayo Edeberry, uh, who Love is a her. fan favorite. Uh, the Bear is probably this year's best show. I would put it against anything. And the fact that it's a comedy is a little mm -hmm. weird because yeah. it's not a comedy comedy where it's like last. If you saw episode six of last oh, season. Oh, uh, my heart is still going through palpitations. Right? Yeah. Like, those are the types of show that you need to take a couple of days after you see an episode like right. that. Right. This yeah. is a well-written show, and I loved it. And Beef, probably the best limited series uh, and I want to talk more a lot, lot about this because Beef, when I first saw it, um, it's the first time that two Asians mm -hmm. win Best Actor the Golden Globes for a limited series. So yeah, congratulations to Ali Wong and Steve. Congrats to that. Speaking of history being made last night uh, for a couple of stars, I know you mentioned those two. What about the first indigenous person to win a yeah. Golden Globe? Talk to us about that. So Lily Gladstone, uh, who is in Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon, it's about a three and a half hour movie. Not everybody's going to see it. And that's going to be the big problem here heading into the Oscars yep. that a lot of people are complaining about how long these movies are uh, to be able to sort of zero in on the caliber of acting in that particular case. But Lily Gladstone overpassed uh, mm -hmm. and just shined in this movie and she becomes the first indigenous woman to win best actress of the golden globes and we're going to be seeing this at the critics choice awards happening mm -hmm. on sunday on the cw we're going to be seeing this uh at the oscar award nominations most likely on january 24th and then in march yes. so we think that she's the lock and the front runner even though I do think Carrie Mulligan from Maestro. Oh, if yeah. you have seen Maestro from Leonard Bernstein, a New Yorker, if you know him, Carrie Mulligan rushed it. She was, so if she there's the anybody that could Good. displace her, 
It could be Pat Carrie Mulligan for Maestro, but Lily Gladstone was talking in Blackfeet tribe language. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that and that was, was also something uh, very yeah. interesting and beautiful to yep. hear, especially in a war show of this caliber. That's absolutely true. That had to be such a feel-good moment. I was, we're her. gonna talk about surprises. The biggest oh, yeah. surprise for me was that Barbie didn't rack up more awards. I thought Me Barbie too, I'm there team. with you, Maddie. So tell us about, um, the, this, this, this group stole my heart, the writer and director of, uh, oh no, excuse me, yeah, Poor Things. This is the Emma Stone. Yep. That, that to the shock of many. Yeah. So, I, you know, listen, um, Yagos uh, Lanthimos, Yorgos Lanthimos, uh, the, the, the director, he's uh, Greek, and it's a weird Emma Stone and him getting together, because if you know anything about his movies, he made a movie called The Lobster. They're all really quirky. They're paced weirdly. Uh, the narrative timelines are off. It's not your traditional linear type of story. It's based off of a Frankenstein sort of huh. inspiration for this uh, movie. The thing is, is that it's only made $12 million at the box office in the United States, while Barbie made $1.4 wow. billion worldwide. Yeah. So you can still tell that the Golden Globes, even though the Hollywood Foreign Press Association has been overhauled, um, it's still a European tilt. Mm -hmm. Poor mm -hmm. Things uh, has been loved and beloved by a lot of the European film critics. And this is what they think is uh, comedy at its best, even okay. though that I feel that Barbie has sort of overhauled how we look at these types of films with mm -hmm. comedies with s deep social commentary like the patriarchy in this particular case in this movie. And I just feel that Barbie delivered on so much more, had yeah. so many layers in that movie. I still put it in my top 10 best pictures, maybe top five. It's a movie that made a lot of noise. It pierced through the culture. Blacks, whites, mm -hmm. Asians, Latinos, everybody was embracing this film inclusive it was america's film over the summer poor things not many people are talking about it right, so yeah. i think it was one of the big shockers of the night including anatomy of a fall over barbies too that was the other one i that mean I yeah you th of. think about how much marketing was poured into barbie it was it was like it it became part of the culture the marketing last became year. bigger than and listen Mattel Cause, cause yeah. it's a show yeah i mean they made, they made their buck so it's okay <laughs> Jack, we just scratched the surface. I know, Maybe really. we'll do an Instagram Live with you later and finish this conversation. You got it. Thank you so much. Be sure to check out Jack's podcast, The Brown and Black Podcast, winner of a Webby Award. Hey, That's hey. what's up. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. And also Kieran Culkin.